All right, so I'm gonna do a quick gem, and obviously there's one thing to to talk about, which has been the unrest that's been going on. And I, I just I really want to hit like one thing broadly. You know, a lot of people have been mentioning or pointing out the fact that despite all this unrest, you know, the stock market hasn't plummeted, uh, which is you know which so something one about the different reality that these people are living in, uh, which has been like borne out by like American history uh, that these folks don't always see these crises um, as serious as the rest of us do. In fact, a lot of these activities and what's going on, especially with the police brutality can be quite good for business. Um, certainly for the people who build the equipment, uh, sell the tear gas and the uh, surveillance systems that the cops use things have been very good for them so far. Um, so let's not forget before we go into the nitty gritty of these, some of these kind of organizations, that the police already received significant amount of tools from the US military uh, through you know, the surplus military equipment, which is from a, a completely bloated budget. Uh, so there's always more opportunity when you see more, more police brutality for this massive industry. Um, you know, but just like specifically, um, LRAD, which is those, which makes those sonic systems, those like sonic uh, cannons. They recently uh, rebranded actually to a much more ominous sounding corporation called Genesis. Uh, they've seen their stock price increase uh, since the crisis began. Smith and Wesson, um, which not only makes weapons for the police, but you know they still make most of their money through uh, private sales. Their their stock jumped up twenty eight percent. Specifically, um, I wanted to talk about Axon, which makes Taser. They had a massive move in the past few days um, with their stock price jumping from around $75 a share all the way up to $95 a share. And this company you know, not only makes the tasers, but they also make uh, the body cameras and a lot of the surveillance equipment that the police uh, use. So I just wanted to like, let's think about a little bit of the political economy of this, of this moment and specifically Axon so that we understand and do not make mistakes going forward. So obviously you sit there and you say, okay, well, this stock price has jumped up, but it jumped up much more than most of the other organizations that, uh, you know, make, uh, you know, weapons that the police use specifically, you know, guns and, and things of that nature. So why was this company moving up um, in such a dramatic way? It's police reform. Remember that the police departments are such a big business right? That all of these kind of solutions that people throw around are massive money-making opportunities for the police, right? So these corporations, they, it doesn't matter to them specifically if like the dynamic changes. What matters to them is the opportunity to make money from selling products. So you're seeing this with things like more surveillance cameras uh, for police departments. You're seeing it with another massive growing industry, implicit bias training. Uh, which police departments are using have been using across the country. Uh, you know, just to, to give credit, you know, there's a really great piece by uh, Alex Vitale in the uh, in the Nation about you know police reform and, and the failures of it. You know, Minneapolis signed a contract for five million dollars um, over a period of a few years to do implicit bias training with their police officers in 2015, and that did not change the culture of the uh, you know of, of the police department. What it did is it allowed the police department to say, we need more money from the city budget and for corporations and companies to come in and, and profit off of this. So remember that like when we talk about you know, reform, these are massive money op making opportunities for a lot of different companies and their bottom line is not fundamentally affected by whether or not the policing actually changes. So uh, this is why I've been 100% uh, you know, saying that this message, defund the police is 100% the way that we need to be going, uh, pushing forward, because over this past decade, as you've seen like these ideas of, of reform, you've just seen larger police budgets, which have not changed the, the culture and the actions of the police departments, but they've just created new avenues of money uh, for private companies to come in and profit of. And just you know, to give people the scale uh, of you know, how serious these budgets are for the police departments and how, if you're like a capitalist or somebody who might have the opportunity to profit from this, um, you know, these are, these are mouthwatering numbers, you know, New York city, $6 billion, uh, Los Angeles, $3.14 billion out of a $10 billion, uh, city budget, Oakland, uh, $264 million in their police, dep bu uh, department budget out of a $592 million budget, you know, in Minneapolis, $1.6 billion. 
in their budget for 2020, right? I mean, these are huge numbers. And, you know, shout out to, I got these numbers from a Luke Derry uh, in GQ magazine. But we need to understand that when we're talking about how we want to deal with this, uh, this problem, that there's huge money-making opportunities. Policing is big business, and it's been big business for a long time. Not to mention uh, all the things that, you know, we've talked about before. You know, the fact that, you know, Israel, um, a lot of these police departments are brought, into, brought to Israel or trainers from Israel who basically have, you know, learned all their tactics from oppressing Palestinian people. There's a lot of money in policing um, and a lot of money in, in police departments. And we need to cut off that tap because nothing will fundamentally change until we directly uh, address that issue. Yeah, shout out to the uh, Minneapolis Public Schools Board of Education, which voted unanimously today to terminate the uh, contract with the Minneapolis PD with their like SRO officers inside schools oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and just like, you know, really quickly, uh, just like on that, I, I, we, we've hit this before, we hit this at the beginning of the show, but like the argument goes like this, you need to defund the police department, one, to stop the carnage and the chaos, and two, because the police should not be involved in all of these, you know, social roles that they have in our society, uh, you know, which comes out of, of racism um, and, and white supremacy and like the need of capitalists to, you know, basically create uh, populations that are threatened. Um, but also because neoliberalism has completely gutted the social state. It's gutted any kind of social programs that are meant to help people who, who need help. It's gutted, uh, you know, housing, mental health programs, all those things. We do not need the police to be doing that. And we need to be, you know, cutting the police budgets and using that money to take care of those other programs. Yeah, I saw a statistic. I'm going to pull it up now. Um, Alora Derencourt, Dur or Durancourt. Uh, she does a study on uh, Northern backlash against the great migration mm. uh, says police are the only public investment to increase in metro areas with more black migration. That's incredible. Um, the only public investment. Wow. Police. I mean, that really says yeah. everything you need to know about. Cops. I mean, that's, that's the history of, of the and neoliberalism, States. right? <laughs> like that's where we're, this that's is, incredible. you are what you invest in folks. Yeah. <laughs> we need to stop investing in, uh, and people with guns roaming our streets. It's insane. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.